and welcome to Malwakes. Today we're painting the Emerald Coast level from Sonic Adventure 1. This is the full version. If you're interested in the time lapse, you can click on the card here. Otherwise, let's get started. I grew up playing a lot of 2D Sonic on the Genesis, but a friend of mine had a Dreamcast in Sonic Adventure 1. And um, the beginning of this was really cool, um, the location was spectacular, I really wanted to go somewhere like that someday. Um, and the orca always kind of stood out as confusing but neat. So I went back through this level um, just the other day to kind of remember and refresh and look at some of the specific elements that are in that stage. And the loop really stood out and the lighthouse really stood out. Now there's a lot more of the stage I could have brought in, but I felt like it would clutter it up too much, so I tried to really keep it minimal um, and give that space of the wide open ocean. Um, and normally when I do something like this, I start with a full sky, fill it in a solid blue, and then start to work the clouds in while the blue is still wet. But I really want to have a deep royal ultramarine blue sky in like light bright white titanium clouds. And I think that's just too big of a transition while the paint is still wet. So I've drawn in my horizon line where I want it to go and started to sketch in where I want these big clouds to go. Now I'm going to block them in with kind of a light gray to give them a base, and I'm going to block the sky part in with the ultramarine um, cyan blue mix, just to kind of give both of them their space. And then I can work on the transition right in between each. After both have dried where I can start to use a bright titanium white, and it'll stay bright titanium white. I know this looks strange right here, but this is exactly how I want it to look right here in this process. Um, so what I'm going to do is use this big stencil brush, and it's a bristle brush so it's kind of fuzzy, and I'm going to put just a little bit of the gray from up here on the tip of the brush, and just tap any extra paint off. And then I'm going to come in here and start to bring in some of the bottoms of these clouds, and then just try and brush it down and fade it into this blue here. Because this gray is lighter than the mix that's here, they show up. Um, and then I'm going to start to bring in lighter and lighter grays, kind of building my way towards the top left of all of these clouds. working on these clouds and I tried a few different things. I tried to bring in some wispy clouds up here in the blue and it just didn't fit. I didn't like the look of it so I just painted some more blue on top. Um, and then I thought about starting to bring in the water and I measured it out with my ruler again just to check and um, just kind of the level of where the clouds are versus where this light blue gray color is wasn't the same. It wasn't equal on both sides. So I just brought more of this blue color here um, to try and work on fixing that to make sure it's level all the way across where the clouds are and then also fading down into that light blue. I taped off the horizon to make sure that it was perfectly straight and level and that I wouldn't accidentally paint too far up here in the sky. Um, and I also took my chalk pastel and started to draw in where the beach is going to go. And I want to start to block in this water, so I've mixed up a dark blue. Um, it's kind of similar to the blue here, but um, it's a little darker and it has a little bit more yellow in it to make it slightly green. So I'm going to lay that down right here along my horizon. Um, and just cover up this blue that's already here, and then I'm going to fade this down into a lighter version of itself. So I've taken some of this color and added a little bit of titanium white, 
and I'm gonna paint that all the way down here towards the beach just to block that space in. I'm also blocking in the sand, so um, this is my wet sand color. It's titanium white with some raw sienna and some burnt umber. Um, and I'm just going to lay this down right along the water and blend it just a little bit into my watercolor. And then I'm going to lay my lighter version of this with more titanium white down here. Now based on my composition, there's a lot of empty space right here. Now in my original sketch it was very blue and you couldn't see any of the sand here. And I plan to kind of show both here by doing a wash over some of the sand later. Because it is transparent water, you should be able to see some of the sand underneath. So I painted the sand all the way up here and I'm going to cover it back later. I'm also going to make this part a bit darker, kind of like it's deeper water, but I can't do any of that until I knew where all of these other objects were going to go. So I drew them in with chalk first and then blocked them in with base colors. So I mixed up kind of like an olive gray color for the rocks. I took more of my sand colors and filled all the sand in. I mixed up a dark green to do some of the greenery here and then here. Um, but I need to finish these faraway islands before I can do the bridge. So I filled in the sand first, and then I mixed up that dark green from over here, which is just um, cyan yellow, burnt umber, and then just a little bit of Mars black. And then I lightened it up with a little bit of yellow um, to do the highlights. So I'm just tapping in some highlights on the tops of these trees, and I'm putting in like a second layer towards the bottom that's kind of just like brush. I never fill up my pages in my sketchbook completely with a sketch, and what I mean by that is like using this whole page to sketch in my picture. I always do the same ratio as my canvas, um, which is a 3 by 4 ratio, and then I have some space that I can keep swatches of colors. In case I need to remake something, I'll have the swatch on the paper where I can compare the new color too. Um, and I also use it to test things out, so I did a little sample of the water here to see how I wanted to do this transition. And I started by just taking a wash of this blue color and brought that on top of like the sand color I had. But I wanted it to be a little bit more green, so I did it again with a little bit of yellow mixed into that color. From there, I can go to my canvas and then just take a little bit of this color, um, which is this color with a little bit of yellow and then some acrylic glazing liquid mixed in to make it transparent. And then I can start to paint right on top of this sand where I want it to show through this color, but I do want it to look like it's underneath something else. Now, in my experience doing these glazes, um, if you don't like it, leave it alone. Once you get to a point, just leave it alone, let it dry. You can always do another glaze on top or repaint it and then do glazes afterwards. Um, but if you keep messing with it while it's drying, you're gonna start to get streaks of color. Like you can see a lot of the sand color kind of right in here. And that's from brushing back over it when it's semi-dry and it picks it up and then just like leaves the color underneath. You also end up with some streaks like you get right here. I can fix those things, but I need to leave this alone. If I keep messing with it, it's just gonna get worse and worse and worse.
I've been working on the rocks and I started with my base color and then I took this dark color I used for the platform of the loop and brought in some shadows, places like in here where it gets darker. And then I used black to darken up some parts of those shadows and I also worked light to bring in some highlights on the planes of the rock. Now I don't think this rock looks bad, I'm just not as happy with it as I am with these two back here. So I'm going to repaint this the base color and then I can work on both of these at the same time. I drew the bridge in and then I blocked it in with some base colors. I used a burnt umber to fill in this top part of the bridge, a light gray for the railing, um, kind of a darker gray for this support here, and then just a lighter gray for the cement part here. There's kind of two parts to those supports. Now that this is dry, I can start to mark in where all of the supports for the rail is going to go, and then I can start to add value and texture and detail to all of those. Um, like give these supports um, some value so they look rounder, and then kind of just shade everything. I'm also blocking in these palm trees over here, and I've just drawn them in. Um, I want them to be far, because if you think about how big this part is with Sonic, like he's only this big here, so they're pretty tiny to begin with just to kind of keep that scale back there and I'm having it so far off the beach it should be pretty small. So I'm just going to block these in with white too and then I'm going to do kind of a burnt umber for the trunks and just block in the top parts green. The tree trunks I blocked in with a burnt umber and then I used um, some of the same rock colors to bring in some value here. I just went a bit lighter and a bit more neutral so they're not as kind of brownish in olive tones as the stones are. I also used the wet sand color to do a shadow on the ground and I did that on all these little ones too. Um, and then I used the chalk to block in the spine of all of the palm bronze. I haven't done it for the big one yet but I'm going to do that before I paint it. And I'm going to block those in with black first. This is just a brush tip marker filled with liquid acrylic. Um, I can draw really tiny lines with this, which is why I like it for something so small.
added value on the palm fronds by making a lighter green. And I just took the green that I had for my base and added more yellow and more titanium white just to lighten it up. But after I did everything with that, I thought it wasn't light enough still, so I added more yellow and more titanium white just to do a few brighter highlights in a couple of the areas. Um, the last thing I need to do to really make this sonic is to add some rings. So I'm doing two different groupings of three um, over here. So I've marked them in with white first and then I'm just going to fill in some gold. And we're done! We have the Emerald Coast level from Sonic Adventure. If you're interested in this piece, you could buy a poster or a phone case or fit on this original canvas. There's links down below. Also, consider supporting me on Patreon. You can find out more at supportmal.com. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes of Mal Makes. And I'll see you again here for another video game painting.